Starlight, star bright, who should Hulk smash tonight? Alright, this is the end. Okay, time for the fourth major Avenger that will be appearing in this movie. We are going to talk about the Incredible Hulk. This is the ultimate rage monster that was a side effect of Dr. Banner trying to create a gamma ray weapon to be used by the military. He doesn't seem to like the results, and, well, neither does Loki, but it makes for great cinema. But the Loki smashing strength is not the only power that Hulk has. He is incredibly durable and has a healing factor. Before we look at his strength, let's look at his durability. Let's take a look at some of Hulk's feats. Hawkeye shot an arrow at him, hit him in the eye, then the arrow snapped from hitting Hulk's eye. He was also stepped on by a full-sized giant Ant-Man, or giant man it would seem in this condition. After he was stepped on, he was thrown into a volcano. After five minutes of digging through and swimming through the volcano, he came out completely unscathed. There are two possible things that could allow Hulk to survive this. Well, sorry, no. Nothing would really allow him to withstand the stuff that could be linked to anything that would keep it as an organism. But one thing that could result in higher toughness, please ignore the Magic the Gathering reference, is if he had more keratin in his skin. Keratin is what her hair, nails, and bullhorn is made out of. The first two are not that impressive, but bull's horns are definitely strong stuff. His skin has a lot of extra keratin in it, then he could possibly be a true walking tank. The second possibility to make sure that Hulk can take a dip in Mount St. Helens is if he were able to rapidly produce beta amyloid protein. You're probably scratching your head wondering what that is, and people who have it are too because it's a byproduct of Alzheimer's. This strange protein is twice as strong as Kevlar and has greater tensile strength than steel, and it's fully organic. And this amazing stuff may metastasize, metastasize, metastasize. Metast thank you, metastasize. This amazing stuff may metastasize to the whole body, giving the Hulk a sort of organic body armor. It is important to note that Hulk may not have Alzheimer's as Bruce Banner does, but radiation poisoning can also cause the spontaneous formation of this neurological disease. This is most likely the best explanation for Hulk's strength because it makes sense that Hulk does, in fact, have Alzheimer's. If you look at Hulk, he cannot distinguish who is friend or foe and ends up believing everyone is trying to hurt him. This is clearly demonstrated from his lack of reasoning, something many Alzheimer's patients have to deal with. Though it is at this point in the video when I would like to inform you that as many as 5.2 million people in America alone in India have Alzheimer's. This disease is nothing to joke about. It is negatively affecting their lives and those around them. Please help take care of those suffering from this disease, just as my parents have done with my grandmother as she also has this disease. Leave respect for the millions of people around the world with this disease. This is not a sponsored message, and it would be great to leave a donation in this link. So back to the topic at hand, the Incredible Hulk. So if Hulk could secrete enough of this weird protein, then somehow coat himself in it, he could gain incredible resistances. Though that would not help him too much with the heat he would be facing. He would need a material called Starlight. The intro might make a bit more sense now because it's a play on words. But this star stuff is actually pretty useful. It can take temperatures up to 10,000 degrees Celsius, or 18,032 degrees Fahrenheit. That is incredible, as lava can only amount to one-ninth of this temperature that this stuff can withstand. Also, this stuff is 90% organic, which means it would be easier to form, adapt, and be controlled by the Hulk. Though the main reason it makes Hulk impossible is that he seems to grab mass out of nothing, but there's always something to create mass out of, and that is energy. You see, through the use of quantum fluctuation and the use of the equation E equals mc squared, we are able to figure out that Hulk needs at least 6 quintillion, 904, or quadrillion, 15 trillion, 270 billion joules of energy to actually become so huge. This is more energy than the entire planet is currently using. This amount of energy has the potential to bring any mass faster than the particles being formed to have time to move out of the way, and this would cause some sort of mound of particles to be formed. If this phenomenon is fast enough, the pressure in this space would exceed the quark degeneracy force and therefore cause a black hole. So whenever he went Hulk, he would kill us all due to gravity, before he got to smash anyone. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's see how strong the Hulk actually is. Now the Hulk gets stronger the angrier he gets. While it is said that Hulk can have limitless strength, he cannot. No person has a mental capability to be angry without limits, but we can just move past this for now. You see, the Hulk still has the same muscle cells that we do. Maybe they're mutated, but they're still the same. This would mean that the Hulk has roughly the strength of a rhinoceros, as is he is similar in weight. But that can be debated as Hulk gets stronger through anger. The reason being is that Hulk can get stronger with anger. 
which is not exactly how this works. The Hulk could, in fact, get stronger because he's angrier. This is not because he has some sort of rage connection, but because of the adrenaline that he receives. This causes your body to go almost into a heightened state of being, making you more aware, and in this case, stronger. Though the reason that you and I cannot throw cards when this enraged is that our body cannot take this much strain on itself, our ligaments would snap, and we cannot continue performing these feats. Much less the measly little muscles that you and I have are too weak to physically pull a two-ton car. They would tear before you got even close. Though because the Hulk is made out of such strong stuff, he can withstand the extra amount of force exerted on his ligaments and muscles due to the fact that he has the beta amyloid protein in his tissues. You see, adrenaline strength is caused by your brain recognizing that you need to use or should use your muscles to their full extent. When I say full extent, I mean that we only use our muscles to around a third of their full efficiency. This is because we are constantly having our heart pump at 150 beats per minute is in fact very bad in the long run. When we access the two extra thirds, our heart pumps fast enough to get the blood and extra oxygen to the muscles that we are now using to their full extent. And this can cause us to perform incredible feats. This is also why your heart beats faster when you undergo adrenaline rush. It is ready to overexert itself, so if Hulk could make his brain think that it was already in the state, he could lift some incredible objects, hence the Incredible Hulk. Since the Hulk is not able to rationalize his thoughts, we can assume that because his brain is preoccupied with achieving super strength, it's just a theory. The best example of this is from a man named Sinjin Eberly. A boulder fell on him while he was mountain climbing, and he was able to prevent it from crushing his ribs. The scary part is that he was sliding towards a cliff that was a sheer drop-off. After this was reported, it was found that the boulder had been pushed off his back and weighed more than half a ton. This is more than the human bench press record holding, and this guy isn't even that big. But man, can he lift. There's also a great video of it on this link. So remember, whether he's taking a dip in Mount Vesuvius or one-upping Mr. Incredible on his train-catching game, Hulk still needs the lullabies to go to sleep. That's it for this episode. Be sure to leave a like and comment on what hero you would like to see perform in the real world next. We're the Superhero Scientists, signing off. Doctor Banner, by Dan.